Welcome back to the Purposeful Pantry. I'm Darcy and today we're going to learn how to turn a pumpkin into pumpkin powder and back again. Okay, what I've got now is like a sink that's not even quite half full of water and I'm going to go ahead and just add a lot of vinegar to go along with it because what I'm looking at is to cleaning my pumpkins. Um, not only do you have mold issues with the stems, whatever gunk is on the outside of your pumpkin, I'll show you by the time they're finished and what the sink looks like after. Um, I'm putting these in and get rid of some of the dirt on the outside. And then I have this little special scrubby pad that I use and I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that I'm getting the whole thing washed. The reason being is that when you cut your fruits and vegetables ahead of time, you're taking care of whatever bacteria, whatever dirt, whatever's on here that your knife is going to transfer to the flesh. Um, you always want to wash your produce. So you can see here all the grit and, left, and stuff left behind after washing those six pumpkins. So you really do want to wash them. All right, basically we're just going to cut our pumpkin in half. I'm going to just do it on either side of the stem. You can use a chef's knife. Yeah, that didn't work. I was going to try using a uh, bread knife. There was a really good serrated edge, but we're going to get with a chef's knife. Good solid knife. Just cut through your pumpkin. So now what you're left with is this on the inside, which you can then easily just remove a good chunk of the seeds and the string with your hand if you don't mind getting gooey that takes care of a bulk of it now you guys may have your own tips for doing this this is just how i do it because i just get through it as fast as i can through as much as i can quickly then i'm going to scoop this into a pile in the corner because you do not want to get rid of the seeds and if you compost you can put the strings back in to be compost so a tip I learned from Linda's pantry this week when I was watching the October extravaganza is to use an old canning jar lid that you're not going to do for anything else and come in here to clean out the inside because it scrapes down on the edge and cleans it out really quickly. Now in the past I've used a, uh, like at Halloween time for doing jack-o'-lanterns, they have kits that have a pumpkin scraper that's like a big... Uh, a wide a wide spoon with serrated edges. I've also used uh, like old grapefruit sp spoons from my grandmother's uh, silver through grapefruit. But you know what? This canning this canning lid this is an amazing trick. It makes it go a whole heck of a lot faster than any of the other tools that I have to clean out the inside of a pumpkin. So what we're going to do is set all of this part aside. You can soak these um, seeds in some salt water and then roast them, uh, some salted water, and then roast them or add any kind of spices that you like to them, and they make an incredible snack. See the difference between the two? That took only a minute to clean out the inside of that pumpkin. So we're just, and it doesn't really matter if you get it perfectly clean because you're gonna end up just drying and dehydrating this anyway. It will, if you use a lot of this uh, string from the inside of your, your puree, puree, it may not make it smooth, but you can just run it through a blender at that point. All right, so let's get through the rest of these and we'll get started with the roasting. So what I have here is a tray lined with aluminum foil. It's about the only time I ever use it uh, because this can get messy later and um, I just, this is the only time I ever use it. So what I do is I dip the slices of pumpkin into the water that I'm soaking my seed, my pumpkin seeds in to add a little moisture so that they can steam better in the oven. I don't put moisture, I don't put water down in the bottom of the tray. I will let these soak, uh, roast at 350 degrees Fahrenheit slash uh, 175 Celsius, about that, uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour. These will probably take a little less because they're smaller. So do that until they're fork tender. Going in the oven. Okay, here's one cool benefit of roasting this way with your um, pumpkin skin. It should just slide right off when you're done. So no peeling in the beginning is even necessary. This just comes right off. 
Now, for those of you who want to, you can actually go ahead and dehydrate the skin um, and powder it. It's perfectly viable for doing that as well. Okay, if you find that you have a piece that doesn't easily come off, this cool thing, just get a, a spoon and you can just sit in pull the flesh off of the skin just like that. It's relatively easy. Sometimes it doesn't come right off and that's all right. You just work it that way and then we're good to go. Okay, here's the stuff that you can choose to take or not to take. It's completely up to you. I did my roasted pumpkin puree and uh, had to walk away from it for So what happened is, is that as it sat in the refrigerator, some of the liquid from the puree separated from the actual puree puree and I just wanted to walk through this process with you in case your puree is a little more watery than you want it to be when you put it in your dehydrator. If you don't have lip trays you might be worried about it falling over the edge and getting messy everywhere. This is a way that you can do it to thicken up your puree a little bit getting rid of some of the moisture before you put it on your dehydrator trays. So this is a I don't know, you just keep going until you got it to a consistency that you like. If you're used to using canned pumpkin, get it to that thickness. This is probably just a little bit thinner than what most canned pumpkin comes like at this point. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit longer. Let's let this thicken up a little bit and then we'll get to putting it on the trays to dry out. Okay, we're getting ready to put our puree onto our dehydrator trays. If you want to dehydrate into leathers that you can store as a, a perfect two cup um, measurements of pumpkin leather so that you can just melt that into some hot water to make pumpkin puree. If you prefer to store in leather for longer term storage because it does last longer than powder, you can do it this way. You can take an approximate two cup measurement and do a leather in the size that you like, making sure that you get it spread thin. You can do this in one size portions if you prefer. I really like getting my icing spatula out for this. So you could do this in a one cup portion if you prefer, if it's an easier way for you to store. Spreading it out fairly thin because you want it to dry quickly. You're not looking to do this in a uh, any kind of candy or fruit leather snack. Although at this point you could, uh, during your puree session, you could actually add some spices uh, to make it into a fruit leather that would be handy to do. And I'll link, I'll link down below a really great recipe that tastes like pumpkin pie from uh, my friend Lori at the Common Sense Homestead. All right, so this would be a great way to do leather sheets if you have a way to store this. Although this piece of leather would be kind of hard to store because unless you've got really big food saver bags or some way to do this, that might be harder for you. So your next option would be to do smaller discs like this. These are approximately one cup portion of pumpkin puree. And I'm gonna spread out And you can then spread these to the size that you want to store them in, um, ideally in a bag that you can. However, because I know that my ultimate goal with this is to powder because I use this all through the year, not just at the holiday season when I'm making pumpkin pies, but I make pumpkin muffins, I make pumpkin smoothies, you can do, uh, add this to any kind of bread that you like, like banana, pumpkin banana uh, bread is a great one. I'm going to do two full cup portions right into my lip tray and I'm going to spread this out. I love these lip trays because I don't have to worry about spillover, but I do want to get it as even as I can because I don't want to have part of it dry and then part of it still have a really big um, lump to dry through. So just work on this until you get a really good, smooth consistency through the whole thing. Let's see if I can try this. My mom used to do it. Let's see if it'll help. Yeah, it really does help. And that evens it out a lot. Now again, because I am making, um, because I'm making a leather out of this that is going to be powdered. I don't care how pretty it is. I don't even want pretty. I want as even and smooth as I can get it to have it dry 
at the same rate so that when I break this up to powder, it's easy, it's dry, and it's ready to go. Something else I, always, I also want to remind everyone of is that I am not the kind of person who does a YouTube video who expects you to be able to do this perfectly, nor do mine come out perfectly. Mine is all about function, practicality, and safety. So I am not here to make pretty fruit leathers that I'm going to turn around and make into a powder. Um, so do as it as you will. Don't worry about making it pretty because you want it to dry more than you want to look pretty because you're going to turn around and powder it anyway. All right. See? Big splat. Let's fix that. Okay, a tip for those of you who have Excaliburs and are going to be using these lip trays. I find that the lip trays take a little longer to dry than a regular sheet tray does. So what I do is I try to give it extra space in the middle where that's where the bulk of the air comes out. The, better, the best flow is in the middle of the machine. And I try to make sure I give it a space in between to allow even more airflow. And I didn't get that one quite down. One-handed. Watch this. One-handed. I did that. Um, so this just helps make the efficiency of drawing these trays and look at the mess. It's okay. It's all right. Um, so this is how it's going to go in. We're going to dry this at 135 until they are dry. It could take six hours. It could take 12. That one's not in straight. Didn't do that so great. And there we go. So you really just need to watch these. Rotate them um, from front to back through the do the process time because they will dry faster in the back than the front and we'll check in when they're finished all right so we're done and i'm going to show you what everything looks like now remember i did this not with the intention of having fruit leathers to store but to make powdered later and i wasn't too uh, particular about how thin i made everything or i actually wanted to make it really thin so everything got super crispy to make powdering easier so here is what i have this is pumpkin puree in a crisp leather that will powder like mad once it goes to the machine. Um, here are the two that I placed that were the two, uh, the one cut portions. That still, because they were, it was thinner. Um, I didn't, I didn't um, simmer it down to get a thicker consistency. So these did break up while it was dry. But I just wanted you to see how you could do this. There you go. One that's going to stick well. There you go. Right there. One cup, of pup, one cup of pumpkin that you can now then, with this one, you can just put into a pot of hot water, uh, break it up and let it, let it just absorb and it will eventually turn back into puree. And then this is the two cup portion that, because again, I didn't simmer it to get it a thicker consistency, this is what it looks like once it dries. But this is an entire sheet, two cups of pumpkin puree. All right, let's get to powdering and how we'll store. FYI, if you wash your grinder between uses and you need to dry quickly for your next round, this is a great way to do it. And no, that's not dirty. That's just pock marks from years of seeds and everything in my grinder. But, um, yep, that's how I did it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is remove... The leather from my tray just like that and I'll end up breaking this up and to store in a jar and because I don't measure because most of the time that I use powder I'm using it in something else so I'm using it in a smoothie or I'm using it in a bread or I'm adding to some vegetable powder if I want extra uh, if I have some extra in my batch that I don't need I'll go. so I have this and what I'm gonna do is just crush it up to make it easier to store little shards that will go in a glass jar to be stored all year long. It will last about, you know, officially um, dehydrated products are about a year by the safe standards, uh, but you may, you may get two, even three years out of this with no problem taste, but there you go. Pumpkin shards ready to be made into powder and we'll do that in just a second. Sometimes it really does help that when you have a powder and you're, and you're getting to the point where it's not doing much more for you, adding more uh, 
food into it helps make everything grind better and if, especially if you're doing a larger amount so i'm just adding more to it and can get it can keep going i'm gonna have that for a snack And never, when you open up a mixer, a coffee grinder, or a bullet blender after making powders, do you ever just open it and stick your face inside? Trust me. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the there you go. You can see that. The the fine, fine powders that come out is not something you want to put up in your nose and in your lungs. Okay, there we go. That's much better. There's still a little bit, but I don't care about that because it's going to... Um, when I put it into any kind of mixture, it's going to melt right in. So that is perfect pumpkin powder right there. That's lovely, lovely stuff. So what I have is one part pumpkin, uh, which is a smaller pumpkin pie. There's my hand. You can see that that's about the size of it. It came out to, a, I did two cups of puree, which came out to, came out to about a half a cup of, um, of the shards, which came out to just a little over three tablespoons of powder. Now that's not how every time that you're gonna do this, that's not gonna be the yield that you get every single time. It will, of course, depend on the kind of pumpkin you use, how dense it is. You're always gonna get something that's just a little different. So what you want in the end is the ratio to be correct to make pumpkin puree for the things that you're gonna bake. As far as just putting in powder for flavoring, that's up to you, use as much as you want. So the next step, let's make some pumpkin puree. Um, and look, it's even sharp. It cut me. Um, I just noticed that. I kept thinking what was hurting. So uh, for storage, just remember, don't put this right into vacuum seal bags. You want to wrap it in parchment paper first. So what? Okay, now we're going to make pumpkin powder into pumpkin puree that you can turn on and make baked goods or pies or whatever you'd like from it. So what you need is two cups of hot water. I keep mine to just about boiling, but I do not put all of the water in. I leave a little bit aside because sometimes things need a little more, uh, or a little less or a little more um, liquid to make them the right consistency depending on your, your um, humidity, etc. This was one half cup pumpkin powder. And what we're going to do is we're going to stir this and then we're going to walk away, as Alton Brown says. Um, we're going to let this rehydrate. Um, right now, it looks like it's just soup, just pumpkin soup. This is not what comes out of a can, not what you're used to for cooking, or what you pull out of a freshly cooked, I mean, a freshly baked pumpkin when you're just using the flesh straight. straight. So we're going to allow this a little time. You can see the grains here along the sides. We're going to allow this a little bit of time to rehydrate. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more liquid. I can already see that it's going to be pretty thick pretty quick. If after a time you've allowed this to have a good 5-10 minutes to sit here and rehydrate and after a time this is still a little soupier than you want, you didn't even add all the liquid um, or you did add it all and you're finding it's just not rehydrating fully and it's still a little more liquidy than you'd like, you can add a little bit more pumpkin powder to it just to adjust the texture that you want. And there you go, pumpkin puree that you're ready to start your next batch of pumpkin bread or pumpkin pie for the holidays. So I hope this helped you learn how to preserve pumpkin for all year long. I love pumpkin powder because this is like gold. I can add it to baked goods, I can add it to smoothies, I can use it to do uh, add to my vegetable powder just to bulk it up if I want, and I can turn it back into pumpkin puree to create other baked goods or to make pie. So I'm so thankful that you are here. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more just like this and have a great day.